Welcome to chapter C5 on sustainable innovation management in the textbook on sustainability management. Let's have a look what you can expect from this chapter. After reading this chapter, you will be able to do a couple of things. First, on a general level, in terms of different uh, concepts and terms, you'll be able to distinguish inventions from innovation, from diffusion. These are three things that sometimes people uh, mix when they talk about innovation. And you'll learn that an invention first is a novel idea or a discovery that can potentially lead to new products or new processes. Innovations then cover the actual introduction and the initial economic exploitation of such inventions. And diffusion as the last step is the broader dissemination and the potential imitation also of innovations. You also be able to describe what sustainability oriented innovation is. So bringing sustainability into the picture, you'll learn that sustainability oriented innovation potentially involves various actors, requires cooperation between different actors. And uh, very important, it's not limited to solely technological issues, but can also encompass organizational innovations, social innovations, or also institutional innovations. You'll then be able to explain uh, different push and also pull determinants of sustainability oriented innovations, provide examples and discuss their interdependence. You'll learn that push determinants for sustainability orientation um, in innovations are a regulatory push, technology push, push from civil society and also a cost pressure push. All these push factors can lead companies to um, looking into more sustainable uh, innovations. The same applies to pull determinants and these consist of a regulatory pull, visionary pull and also a market pull and you will learn what these different determinants are about. You'll then be able to explain how directional certainty can be achieve, achieved and you'll learn that uh, to achieve directional certainty innovations have to be economically and also ecologically reversible. That means when we start with an uh, innovation, bring an innovation to the market, we do not necessarily know um, from the very beginning whether these innovations are truly sustainable in all their forms and facets. Uh, and if they turn out to be not as sustainable as we think in the beginning, then we need to kind of be able to take them back. And that's what directional certainty um, and economic and ecological reversibility is about. You'll then be able to explain uh, different approaches of sustainability oriented innovations and provide examples. And these are three main approaches. The first one is operational optimization. The second one is organizational transformation. The third one is systems building. You'll learn that operational optimization builds upon a given set of needs and tries to set us them more efficiently, more eco-efficiently usually than before. The second one goes a bit further, that is organizational transformation, which requires a more fundamental shift in an organization's mindset to provide really like novel goods, novel services, novel business models. And the most far-reaching sustainability oriented innovation type is systems building, which requires thinking beyond the boundaries of any single organization and instead include partners, partners from previously unrelated areas, also previously unrelated industries. Furthermore, you'll be able to um, explain the basic idea of the so-called business at the base or bottom of the pyramid, the, the BOP, that is the base or bottom of the pyramid, refers to the bottom tier of the world income pyramid. So the what's poorest of the poor basically, and it illustrates the idea that there are potential business opportunities as well as chances for power alleviation um, through business activities. Then you'll be able to distinguish BOP 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0 approaches and discuss their potential opportunities and also limitations. And you'll learn that BOP 1.0 focuses on the poor as an underserved customer group. BOP 2.0 aims at accessing the BOP as a resource for new model business models, adapted business models, and really integrate them into value co-creation activities. So not only selling to them, but really co-creating with them. 
and the BOP 3.0 approaches uh, go even a bit further, and they put greater emphasis on really integrating a triple bottom line perspective and on seeing poverty as a complex and multi-dimensional issue. And as always, we have a couple of features here again in this chapter, quite a few actually. We'll have a few features on sustainability in business. The first one is about Xerox Solid Inc, a product as a potential example of operational optimization. We then have an example of systems building in the sustainability in business feature number two here in this chapter. And it's about the Kallenborg symbiosis in Denmark as a really innovative approach to circular economy, circular thinking and systems building. The feature on uh, faces of sustainability is about CK Pralat, basically the, the father of the BOP idea and thinking or really brought this concept and idea forward. Then we have again two features on sustainability in business. Uh, first one is about Hindustan Unilever's limited Shakti project, one of these BOP 1.0 approaches. And then we have a BOP 3.0 potentially approach. Uh, that's the example of Grameen Danone Foods, especially in Bangladesh. Um, that do produce and sell at the BOP uh, with a social business idea. Then we have a sustainability in research feature that is about the seminal article about uh, by Pralat and, and CK Pralat and Stuart Hart from 2002 on the fortune at the bottom of the pyramid where this mainly started with the entire debate on the bottom or base of the pyramid. And finally, we have uh, another sustainability in business feature about M-Pesa, the mobile money pioneer in Kenya, which is nowadays world famous basically for really inventing mobile money. So have fun again with this chapter.